Okay, so our next uh, speaker is uh, Liao Chang, who's uh, been visiting Cambridge for the last uh, month, so it's very nice to have him here. Um, and he'll be talking about the project that we've been working together on, which is a uh, machine learning approach to multi-scale environmental magnetism. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, uh, Richard. Uh, so to start, I just realized my first ever academic talk was a magnetic interaction <laughs> about 15 years ago when I was still doing my PhD. No, it's good <laughs> to be back. I was excited here at Cambridge. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Richard just mentioned uh, why I'm here. I'm uh, working at Peking University in China. Uh, we have joined a project uh, you know, with Richard uh, from the Royal Society. But because uh, at the beginning of the project, the COVID start. So the last three years, we couldn't come, but finally we managed to come here. And uh, but, uh, I think we made some good pro progress. So I would like to take this opportunity to share some of our results. So that's my uh, talk here. Um, so I did move to the keyboard. Just maybe click on the screen. <laughs> Oh, good, good. Yeah, so my outline, uh, four parts. Uh, background, why we do multi-skill environmental magnetism. And then I would like to share some of our method methodological advancement and uh, want to share some of the applications to some uh, really complex uh, environmental samples. Um, so why multi-skill quantitative environmental magnetism? Yeah, so I'm pretty sure uh, many of you have dealt with really complex natural samples. And I want to share some of my sample, which I feel really, really complex. And if you just do bulk measurements, it's very, very difficult to understand. So on the left, I show complex iron sulfide integrals, uh, you know, which contain Grigal sulfide and with really complex uh, structures. And uh, if you take a fix uh, cut of the small region, and uh, you see really complex structures, and some of the particles are oxidized. And on the right, I show uh, uh, magnetophotal samples. We, we can see, uh, you know, uh, the uh, magnetophotal particles, big and small, and with different morphologies. So this is our sample. And on the bottom, I show igneous uh, dendrites, you know, really complex metal structure. So chemical, mineralogical and texture and magnetic heterogeneity very common you know in natural samples and uh, it's really important we should characterize these features uh, in order to uh, interpret the bulk you know the environmental magnetic parameters that we measured so so i show another example you know typically in environmental magnetism so we measure a core and we measure kind of magnetic properties and we try to make some interpretation. As I said before, I mean, there are lots of problems. And the way goes, you know, sometimes very hard to understand the origin. So we need to, uh, to have more confidence for the interpretations. And so a few uh, the microscopic characterization is very important. Uh, but, but quite often, uh, the microscopic data are very large, you know, images and chemical compositions which becomes very challenging to, to, to do a quantitative ana analysis. So that's why the, the main idea of the project is, uh, uh, so second part is about some of our de uh, development of uh, uh, analytical methods. Uh, you know, I show here again, you know, for in typical environmental magnetism, we start with, uh, uh, you know, natural sample, which is often very dirty. And we measure some kind of magnetic properties. We come up with some interpretations. And quite often, the microscopic uh, uh, analysis uh, is skipped. You know, skipped. Uh, yeah. But, uh, so I, I think uh, it's very important for some, at least for some typical samples, we should do uh, the uh, microscopic characterizations. So for the project, uh, the main part is about uh, the data analysis. You know, once we have very large uh, data sets, uh, what do we do? Uh, uh, and then uh, once we have uh, the macroscopic data, we can build uh, numerical models. Uh, so we use macromagnet models. Uh, we could predict the bulk or environmental magnetic properties. So, so we, we focus here. 
Um, so one of the uh, uh, work we did uh, is my PhD student, he's actually sitting here. So we uh, developed uh, uh, CNN is a convolutional uh, neural network, CNN methods to characterize uh, magnetic mineral morphology. You know, morphology is very important. You control also the magnetic properties. And the shape, the morphology itself, tell important uh, environmental information. And so we, uh, in the model, uh, uh, we combine two kind of a very uh, uh, famous uh, CNN models, which is UNET, which is for uh, eye detection, we could characterize the shape of particles. Uh, second model is the uh, NANET 5 model. We, we, we use it for particle classification, you know, what kind of shape, you know, we group in different particles. So that's the, uh, uh, the model. And uh, uh, I just want to say this uh, model is applicable to all sorts of shapes, but we train the model for magnetic forces, you know, the, because magnetic forces have the really well-defined shapes. So we, we, we use that. And uh, so we trained uh, uh, magnetic forces. So I show on the left, there's some uh, uh, typical TEM images. Uh, so before we, we measure it by hand, you know, take ages, you know, like a um, thousand particles take that week. And uh, so that's our results uh, uh, manually, yeah? Maybe one week work. And uh, on, the on, the, on the right is the CNA uh, results. And as you can see, I mean, by the way, the analysis is very quick, minutes, yeah? The click for the results. And, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, in general, these, uh, they compare very well with uh, the manual measurements and it works quite well. And uh, the other thing I just want to say, sometimes even if we just use a small uh, amount of data sets, we got pretty much similar kind of uh, uh, results. So it works uh, quite well for making the fossils. And uh, uh, in addition to the morphology information, we can also do like in situ uh, uh, structure determination because from the models, we can determine not just the shape, you know, we can also determine the, the position and orientation of the, uh, each particles. And then uh, this is information really, really important because, because we can use it to build uh, numerical models. And then we can use micromagnetic calculation to predict, you know, what uh, the magnetic properties. So that's uh, another uh, advantage of the, the model. And then uh, very quickly, I want to share uh, some of the uh, uh, applications to dirty samples. Uh, so the first sample is uh, uh, marine uh, sediments, uh, um, which is, uh, uh, so we're interested in uh, Asian warming events, which is PTM. Uh, the, um, which is a global warming event 55 million years ago. And uh, so these samples are all contain magnetic fossils. Yeah, almost pure magnetic fossil uh, sample. And we have uh, ocean sediment core from different uh, depths, water depths. And you know, for this, we count thousands and thousands of particles. And uh, we know uh, for each sample, they, they, they change. They, they do change. And uh, uh, yeah, that's one thing we use. It. Direct uh, imaging, we see the, 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 the part of size and shape, they change. And of course, you can't measure, uh, you can't do TM for all, all your sample, you know. Our core is like, uh, you know, uh, meter, meter long, and you, you know, hundred sample, you can't just do it all, all samples. But, but we measure the bulk, yeah, we measure the bulk. But the thing is, that we want to be sure uh, our interpretation is robust. So what we do is, uh, we build numerical models, especially with, uh, with Richard's uh, help. So we use the direct uh, 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 imaging data sets we generated and we build numerical models. And then we, we, we could calculate uh, the magnet properties and compare with the bulk magnet, magnet probe we measured. And as you can see here, it fit quite well. So uh, after we did this test, we are pretty sure the origin of the bulk magnetic problem we measured, and which is uh, because we see it, yeah, and we verified verify the uh, properties. So uh, here, that's the summary of the results. Uh, we have used the magneto 
also property to trace uh, what happened during these warming events. So uh, from the interpretation, we can say uh, at the different water depths, the ocean experienced deoxygenation. Uh, so at the intermediate water depths and also the deep ocean. So uh, very quick, so why is that? So, during time, uh, temperature rise, uh, uh, because temperature increase and second ocean stratification. So we, we uh, would expect the ocean deoxygenate and we see it. Uh, uh, so second example uh, is a biological example. So yesterday, I remember someone talked about uh, aggregate, which is the inorganic sedimentary diagenetic aggregate. So uh, this, this one. Uh, but there's also biogenic we get produced by the magnetotactic bacteria. So for quite a long time, uh, what's the difference? I mean, individual particles are similar, yeah? but uh, you know, the, the different origin. And uh, for a long time, we are not quite sure about the property of a biogenic we get. Uh, uh, even myself, I, uh, you know, the, the difficulty is we don't have samples. Yeah? Uh, this uh, sulfide uh, bacteria, they're not very stable and very difficult to culture you know, in the lab and you can't enrich in, in, in nature. So uh, we, we, don't, we don't know their magnetic properties. And so what do we do? And now we have the, the models. So we do it in that way. And I find it's really, really you know, robust. So what we do is we start from uh, imaging, direct TM imaging. And that I show here, and we should we apply our methods. We could extract, uh, you know, the green, you know, the structures, uh, you know, automatically, and then we can build numerical models, you know, for different kind of uh, bacteria, different shapes, different structures, and uh, and then we, we can just calculate. It's like a BS machine, yeah. And we create uh, like samples, and we just numerically simulate magnetic properties. And uh, the result is really consistent. So, uh, by the way, I just want to say, uh, for, to calculate the bulk magnetic properties, there's some other assumptions. So we use random orientation particles. So, but, but anyway, we could uh, simulate the bulk magnetic properties. So here, very quickly, I want to summarize. Uh, uh, so the simulation of biogenic brigade shows uh, that magnetic property are really distinct from uh, diagenetic brigade and also biogenic magnetites, which is very helpful. You know, uh, I just want to show uh, you know cluster here, biogenic brigade, and you have others. So uh, yeah, do I have time? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll quickly move to the last uh, case. So which is igneous rocks? Uh, so we study uh, some of the mid-ocean ridge basalts. They altered, yeah, because uh, the hydrothermal activities. You you know these hydrothermal vents, uh, black smoke. They're really destructive, and uh, so they altered uh, the uh, the fresh basalts. And the uh, uh, and actually people use uh, magnetic anomaly, uh, geophysical methods to detect uh, you know where the vents, yeah. Some of them are distant. And uh, we want to know what's the origin of the signals, because that's very important, you know, how the mineral was, was altered. So we collect a sample from a Southwest Indian uh, Ridge and also North uh, Atlantic uh, near the, the hydrothermal vent area. Uh, so some of the sample I show here is really, really complex. So the, uh, uh, I show one example here. So for the, uh, uh, you know, in basaltic samples, we have the large dendritic uh, population, uh, which have typically fog signal like this. And also we have the fine grain in the interstitial glass. So very fine grain particles. And uh, if you take a fake sample, you see the particle clusters, they're really fine grain and highly interacting. So produce this kind of fog uh, signature. So, uh, and, I, want, I don't want to go to detail, but uh, we analyze uh, a sequence of samples which appear in uh, experience different uh, dissolution. Uh, we could come up with a model, you know, how the magnetic minerals was uh, removed gradually. And the, we built a micro, uh, we built a, 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 a magnetic anomaly models, and we could say 
the origin of you know the uh, the uh, uh, the magnetic anomaly patterns. And uh, this one, uh, John is going to share in next talk, so I, uh, I will just skip. Um, yeah, to summarize here uh, very quickly, uh, so multi uh, skill environmental magnetism is very, very important. I mean, we can't do it for all the samples, but I, I think it's very important to do it for some sample to verify. Yeah, and we have some uh, methods to, to assist, uh, you know, to analyze it more efficiently. And the other thing is that we can build numerical models, which we can use the microscopic characterizations to predict the bulk pro property we often measure in the lab. And uh, I feel this method could be very useful to analyze many dirty samples. Thanks so much. Great, so thanks there. Yeah. Um, yeah, open to questions. Oh, I have one. Okay. So, I mean, how routine is it now to take, go from PM images to your size distribution for the magnetic zone? It's not very common. Many people think to do it. But uh, I mean, it depends on the case. So for my case, uh, you know, we measure uh, some of the bulk magnetic signature, the change is very small. You know, as I showed, uh, some samples should only, only show five minutes of difference. What's our region? And if you don't do the detailed work, I, you don't see it. Uh, but in some of our case, uh, the five minutes of the signal is key. And we use it for the, uh, the patterns. Uh, for the interpretation. So I feel, uh, and, and myself, I feel it's very important. And uh, so these are quantitative analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, for the routine ones, you know, at least you should do that imaging. You know? Uh, you know, if you look at my paper, I think I have images for almost all my environmental magnet studies. So that's the kind of minimum. You should, you should see something, yeah? Rather than just you know, page, uh the parameters, yeah. Great, yeah. Any questions online? No? In which case, thanks for Yao again.